Whoa, eye-catching, isn't it? To some, it can be offensive. When I first saw this sculpture, I was more curious than anything. Why does the Virgin Mary have a water pipe going through her? Is it a drainage pipe? Sewage pipe? Why is it on top of a drain? What is the purpose here? These were the questions that were going through my head when I first saw this sculpture. So I did a little research and here's what I found. The sculpture is part of a bigger installation made in 1997. The artist who made it is Robert Gover, who has made many artworks using water pipes and things of the sort. In the webpage www.theartstory.org, I found an article on Gover. In the article, a critic Christopher Knight looked at Gober's untitled work and claims the untitled piece engages sight and sound in order to seduce the viewer into a kind of baptism both spiritual and material end quote with the catholic imagery and its relationship to water I believe that Gober is telling his personal experience with the catholic church and the influence it had on him through his artwork this is another artwork of Gober there is another signature pipe going through the basket, which is meant to hold food, belongings, or riches. Again, we can connect this to the Catholic religion because the body of Christ was passed around in a basket during the Last Supper, or when they just have to collect the money during the Mass. But here it's empty and remain that way because of the water pipe that is going through it. In the article from the archives, Poetics of the Drain, David Joslett says in his installation, Gober suggests that both bodies and things have to be let go, allowed to slip into oblivion, end quote. With this in mind, it makes sense that the basket has a hole in it, even though there should be things in it, and it will never be filled because of the pipe going through it. From this angle, we can see through the sculpture to the staircase behind it. The staircase has water running down it, which makes them very dangerous to climb up, symbolizing that ascension is a very dangerous climb. The staircase behind the statue is the focal point in this photo. Hazlitt mentioned in the article, from the archives, Poetics of the Drain, that it brings a sort of melancholy to the air, seeing the Virgin Mary's womb with the hole through it. Going back to his quote on letting things go, Gober has yet again reinforced Hazlitt's idea on what exactly the sculpture means. Here is another work of the Virgin Mary that I randomly picked from Google Images. In almost every work of her, there is the glowing in between her heart and womb. In this one she is opening her heart to her God and the Holy Spirit. That is what the glowing and the flames around her heart is. In Gober's work, that faith is not there. And he symbolizes that by having a pipe protrude the statue's chest area where the heart should be. He is telling us that in life, faith must be let go because it too won't last forever. This work here has the Madonna in the same pose as the one Gober used. Here she looks far more complete and more alive. As Knight said, Gober's work on the statue did bring about a sense of dread, not only, according to Catholics, because she's the mother of Christ, but that the loss of a child or the womb where everyone is born in is a horrible ordeal. And that's the type of feeling I get when I see this. If you look closely, you can see that the face is filled with dread. Whether Gober did this on purpose or not, it really does set the mood. This is the entire installation. There are two suitcases on both sides of the sculpture that were handmade by Gober himself. Both the suitcases are fitted on top of drains. They are also empty and you can see into the drainage where there is a type of pond underneath the entire work. In the next video, I will show you that pond and into this one of the suitcases. This yet again supports Joslet's quote, 
that Gober is trying to say that all material things must be let go. Suitcases are supposed to carry valuables, but these two suitcases have been stripped of its purposes. I would also like to point out that the lights are on the statue, suitcases, and the stairway. I believe that Gober is trying to say that in order to take that climb of ascension, one must let go of all earthly things. This is another work of Gober's, titled Madonna y Crucifiso. Now if you thought the untitled work was eye-catching, then this one is the hotter, older sister. The Jesus head is completely missing and water is exiting out of his nipples, symbolizing a sort of fertility. The bird there is possibly God himself seeing what has become of his son. Gober has some strong thoughts of the Catholic religion as shown through this artwork. The water here is used as the life that was breathed into the religion because after the death of Christ, that's when his followers started spreading Catholicism until it was a worldwide religion. As stated in the article on www.theartstory.org, the insertion of the covert appears as a fatal blow to the Madonna figure, calling into question whatever spiritual relief or reinsurance she could provide to her worshippers. And a quote, now, this can be applied to the same artwork I am showing you now, because by removing the head, one can see that the crucifix is indeed just a thing that can be played with. It is not some holy relic that must always be cherished and worshipped. This untitled installation is also one of Gober's, and it has a very heavy theme of religion, specifically the Catholic religion. In the article, you know his name, and now so do I, the author says that what makes Robert Gober's art so compelling is that he manages to continually create works which are relevant to the times we live in. Which I agree with, because every artwork I have shown you can be related to the current times. This installation here I believe gives a great insight into how an openly gay artist sees the Catholic Church, how during his childhood it made him feel about him and his sexuality. As we can see, the room is empty and filled with what seems like random things, but to me this looks like some kind of baptism which would greatly explain as to why the crucifix is spewing water. In a baptism, you must be showered in holy water. If you can't tell, the hellless crucifix is in the back is the same one I showed you earlier where the water runs from the nipples. Holy water is blessed by priests, given to them by the blessing of Christ himself. Here. I believe the best place to get the blessing is from the main source itself. This here is Gober's installation in the exhibition, The Heart is Not a Metaphor. The giant drain pipes are in what appears to be an old baby crib. Once again, he is saying this is just a thing, and nothing special that should be cherished. I don't believe he means the baby itself, but the crib. It is also the first thing people saw when they entered his exhibition so it gives them a good idea as to what they're getting into. This man right here is Robert Gover, who is an openly gay artist who uses his art as his voice. He was in a Catholic devoted family during his young life. Obviously, this is why I believe he uses objects that can be connected to the religion, such as the Virgin Mary statue and, and the crucifix. I hope I give you some insight as to why Robert Gover does what he does. Here is my artwork. Gober's water obsession greatly influenced what my artwork is going to be. This little guinea pig is curious as to what the thing above him is. Little does he know, it's a sink that brings water, which is something he needs to survive. I'm also trying to say that water brings us life. Without it, we wouldn't have cute creatures like these. <laughs>